Hi, yes, it's another lead lighting video. I've done a whole bunch of videos on lead lighting. I've got a YouTube uh, playlist which I'll link in with um, installing lead lights and lots of lead light theory with my mate Doug and all that sort of stuff. And yes, I still don't have enough light here in the EEV blog lab to shoot video. I'm actually rather restricted to some shots that I can actually do here in the lab because I do not have enough light. And I've said this many, many times low light in quote marks is not at night time so it's like in a typical office environment like this and even for professional video cameras it can be hard in certain depth of field situations to shoot noise free images so i've done several lighting upgrades before but i'm going once again even further probably the whole hog this time i've got uh 10 of these uh, 600 millimeter square 60 watt lead panels and <laughs> I'm going to install nine of them uh, we're going to install nine today because nine is what fits in an entire strip along here and I'll show you what the plan is you've seen these before okay I've got a uh, I've got a remote control uh, thing that can turn some of these lead lights on and I've basically got three, uh, four big 60 watt panels plus a bunch of lead strip, uh, uh, lead tube replacement uh, fluoros in there. And basically what I plan to do is uh, put nine panels all the way across one continuous strip, well, all the way with LBJ right up to that air vent up there. So one continuous strip of light right across. Now the reason I want to put them in one continuous strip along here is because this lab is primarily for shooting video. Now if I was just working on these benches, yeah I'd have the lights directly above the benches and I do have those, uh, the ones that Doug uh, made along here and I turn those on via remote control if I want to actually work. They put, you know, more than a thousand lumens on the bench and, you know, everything's sweet. So I want one continuous strip here because I set up, when I'm working on this bench, this is where I do my teardowns and, and, you know, a good majority of my videos. I've got my camera set up here. So I need effectively the lights behind me like this, sort of up at an angle. So it comes down like that. So then I don't get reflections. You've probably seen it. If I'm, uh, if I'm reviewing a product, uh, for example, and like I tilt the screen like that, you can get reflections of the lights and things like that. So it's uh, kind of like, you know, there's no real best place to put them uh, because how you tilt the thing. But anyway, you d definitely don't want them right above you for shooting video, stuff like that. And of course, on this bench, this is where I sit my camera for doing uh, the mailbag and other stuff where I have the backdrop with the racks and everything in there. So um, yeah, so I want one big strip along here which will light up pretty much both sides like that. That's the plan anyway. I've only got four 60 watt uh, panels at the moment plus a couple of those as I said, those little daggy uh, fluoro replacement things I got from Audi. I did a video on those. They're, they're pretty crusty. They don't um, output, my, output many lumens at all. So I'm uh, going to now put install nine in a pattern so that I, once again, I can use an RF remote control and switch them uh, however many off and on that I need. Because I don't want to have nine blaring all day. It'll be crazy if I'm just working on here. So I'll turn like nine on when I'm shooting video. I'll turn on however many I need. Depends if I'm over at the whiteboard and doing a Fundamentals Friday or something, I might have a different lighting configuration for that, for example, because if I'm on camera like this, I don't want to be blinded by light, but I want enough to fill in and all sorts of stuff like that. Anyway, lights at the moment, they're all matched here in the lab. They're 4200 uh, Kelvin color temperature. These new ones I've got, um, imported these directly uh, from the manufacturer in uh, China. These are a 60 watt panel, nine millimeters thick, really very nice standard 600 by 600 millimeter size. So they just drop right into the ceiling here. And um, uh, these are 5,000 uh, K. I decided to up it. Uh, they didn't make 4,200. They made um, five, 4,000 or 5,000. So I decided to go up to 5,000. No real reason behind that. 5,000 is more 500 to 5500 is more of your traditional uh, uh, daylight photography, portrait photography, videography type uh, 
color temperature on these things. So, you know, it's closer to that, but ultimately I do all my white balancing in the camera. I um, have my camera set up specifically for 4200. Now I'll change after these, I'll change my camera to 5000 and Bob's your uncle. So before I install them, I'm just going to get some baseline Lux measurements here. On the bench, I'm going to have put some post-it notes, so I put it in exactly uh, the same uh, spot every time when I measure them, before and after. And here we go, I've actually got my main four studio uh, lights on here, and I'm only getting about, you know, 600, like I'm standing behind the camera, so if I move away, it might uh, change a bit. Yeah, see, I'm blocking a bit of it now if I move directly over the camera, standing over it where I normally am, um, it drops down a bit. So we're only talking like 600 lux. That is not a huge amount. That is, it's not quite a low light environment. Really like a low light office would be like 300 lux. I believe about 300 lux is like the absolute minimum uh, Australian standard for uh, office lighting and things like that. But you've got to remember that even professional camcorders like what I'm using or semi semi-pro camcorders like I'm using, their specs are based around, all their performance specs usually typically based around a minimum of a thousand lux. So I'm getting not even that. That's why I have some issues with it. Anyway, let's go around and uh, take some uh, baseline measurements and then we'll install these panels and see what we get afterwards. And by the way, these uh, panels have a late rated lumen output of uh, 80 lumens per watt around about there. So we're talking about 4,800 lumens for a nominal 60 watt uh, panel here. But one of the most important things, of course, is the CRI or color rendering index. These are fairly typical. They're not, you know, superbly good. They're, they just say greater than 80, which is, you know, fairly typical of a half decent uh, LED panel lighting like this. And the color rendering index is important because if you've got things of different colors like this, then it may not reproduce um, accurate colors. It may have, you know, some sort of green tinge on certain colors or, or something like that. But anyway, you do want greater than 80. And I actually paid a bit more to get um, decent lead drivers for these. These are a Lyford uh, brand one. And yeah, well, they're not the absolute best, but they're not like a really cheap uh, no-name one. So I thought we'd uh, just check these puppies out and like they're, they are a big decent size one. The bigger they are, um, probably the longer they're going to last, all things being equal, because they aren't trying to cram a lot of power into a tiny um, space. And these look reasonably well designed. Let's take a quick squeeze at it. So we've got our mains input uh, coming over here. Yeah, we've got uh, input fuse here. We've got ourselves a MOV. We've got ourselves... Uh, the requisite um, uh, common mode choke and filtering, and we've got ourselves a, a reasonably big ass diode bridge there, and uh, that's flapping around in the breeze a little bit. That coil there, they've tried to put some silicon on there, but yeah, this wouldn't su survive a lot of vibration, but eh, I'll cut them a little bit of um, slack there. Transformer looks decent, um, yeah, and those heat sinks look uh, quite reasonable. The output caps though, they're, um, yeah, these uh, Ishi brand, a shy brand or whatever they are. Curiously, 125C rated. So that's, that's pretty good. They were thinking there, um, a very high uh, temperature rating ones. Anyway, nice and neat and tidy. Um, also, they've got uh, the dia bridge here. They've put isolation slots between the individual pins. That's a nice touch. Somebody knew what they were doing. I don't know what these holes are doing here. Probably just for some uh, ventilation on the thing. I don't think they're really doing that for um, isolation uh, purposes. They've got some of that uh, over here as well. And there's the bottom of the board. They've actually got some uh, solder code on some of the traces to increase the... Uh, uh, ha current handling and maybe some uh, dissipation and stuff like that. Anyway, that looks uh, quite reasonable. I got no problems with that whatsoever. Clearance is all very nice. That looks like a reasonably well designed. We've got some spark gaps in there as well. Somebody knew what they were doing, so I don't mind that at all. That is a really neat and tidy layout. Worth paying extra for, definitely. All right, finished taking all my light measurements around here. I've got little post-it notes everywhere and I've written the value on here. Ranges from like <clears throat> um, these two ones are around about 800 uh, lux on the bench. And by the way, you can't, don't stand over it like this and measure. You've got to actually get 
out of the way like that, trap for young players. And um, anywhere from 800 in this, um, basically this hot spot here, over where Dave's sitting over there, we're looking at like 200. That's a really dark corner where he's got like one strip fluoro over him or something. So not fluoro, but lead replacement. And I've got three points on this bench here. And at the back where I sit there and do the mailbag, we're only talking about 400 lux. So, you know, basically 400 lux on my face. It's, it's bugger all. And I'm going to just do an impromptu colour chart here. I don't actually have a proper uh, camera colour chart. Pfft, I'm a pro supposedly a professional videographer. And anyway, don't have one. And this is with the old light in here. So I'm going to, uh, this is white balanced at 4200K. So I'm going to take, try and get exactly the same shot. Uh, this is auto exposure because I'll have a lot more light uh, later. So I can't exactly do the same exposure. So I've got auto exposure here. Um, so I'll try and get exactly the same shot to see if there's any color differences between before and after, but eh, it could be a bit hard to get. I'll do my best. And here's the exact same shot again, but we've got all the new lights installed. We've got them all switched on and um, the white balance is now set for, well, I use my white balance card. It tells me uh, 5100 uh, Kelvin. That's what the camera set it at. Anyway, that's white balance. See if you can tell the difference. Done. That is a shitty job. I don't know how anyone can do that for a living. These ceiling freaking panels. Unbel unbelievable. Got all through my hair, got it in my eyes, had to wash my eyes out, and ah, it's just ugh, sneezing. It's just horrible, those acoustic um, ceiling panels. Anyway, ta-da! Well, well, you can't see them on the camera there, but yeah, this is all the lights turned on. Ta-da! Look at that, it's brilliant, all pun intended. And there we go, there's the entire tri strip. Sorry it's actually hard to, because uh, they're so bright, I can like um, turn up a fixed exposure and then just have the lights like completely blow out like that. And uh, yes, they are all remote controllable. We're having a problem with the remote control at the moment. It's not turning off one of the channels properly. Uh, we thought one of the uh, metal troughs up there was actually blocking the RF, but we put it in the center of the tile and, well, yeah, it doesn't seem to be going, but let's see what we can do. All right, let's give it a bell. I got my remote control, which will uh, switch these off and on. But as I said, got a little RF issue, so I'm gonna have to go up to turn the first set. And as you can see, I got uh, just two on there ordinarily, just when we're in the office here, it's adequate. But uh, go up here and ta-da, there we go. So now I've got every second light on like that and that's pretty darn good. But then um, this one actually works though. So the second one, there we go, can turn them all on. Sweet. I can hook that up to a Knight Rider LED scanner circuit. <laughs> Back and forth, awesome. That'd be great. And all off, ah, bloody, I don't know, what's the problem? It's just, I'll show you where it's sitting. Actually, it's ridiculous. Here we go, we're up in the roof, and here's the panel here. Look, I'm just sitting on top of this acoustic tile, there's the two RF receivers, and it does, one works perfectly, and the other one doesn't. And yes, I've actually tried uh, swapping them, so I don't know what the hell is going on. Anyway, there's all my panels installed there, and, uh, Woo! They go all the way up the back. It's a long way. Here's one thing I really love about these connectors. Now, here's the connector on the, uh, the panel itself, and this is the connector on the power supply. And you think they're identical. How can they mate? Well, look, they're hermaphroditic. Yes, I think that's a word. Well, if it's not, I just made it up. They're actually exactly the same connector. Look. Exactly the same connector like that, but you can plug them in, ta-da, like that. They're sexless, absolutely brilliant, love it.
And on my teardown bench here, I'm getting an increase of about 73%. I'm now getting 1,372 lumens. The camera's in the way a little bit here, but uh, I was getting 792 before. Awesome. And next to it here, I got 54% increase. This was the worst one at 48% uh, percent increase. Over here, 65 percent increase on the uh, whiteboard here I got a 71% uh, increase this is like face in like face on like that so it's not like wasn't flat so anyway um, over here on the uh, mailbag bench I got 108% this was my best result I got uh, double and I got 81% uh, over there and I think uh, uh, almost 70% over there. So there you have it. This was actually a huge improvement. I'm very impressed with these panels. More impressed by actually the price for the performance. I paid 45 US dollars for these panels plus the uh, reasonable, you know, decent quality uh, constant current converter for the thing. So thoroughly impressed. Direct imported from uh, China. I ordered 10 of them and cost me about 250 bucks uh, courier postage to have 36 kilos worth of panels. I think each one weighs about three and a half kilos or something like that. So thoroughly impressed. In some locations here, I'm getting double the amount of light and uh, the color balance, uh, basic color balance uh, test I did here, it seems to be very little uh, difference actually. So, you know, the color rendering index is, you know, good enough. It's nobody's complained about color in my videos or anything like that. So these are certainly not worse than what I had before. So very, very impressed. Unbelievable what you can price, you can get these things for now. Wow. And I'm sure there'll be a lot of people asking this question, so I'll, I'll answer it now. Why don't I just put in work, you know, like uh, studio lights on stands that I can position, position them exactly where I want for each shot and it'd be fantastic. Yeah, that's great if I want to dick around. I've tried that before. I've had proper diffused uh, studio lights here, like a couple of hundred watts a pop and set them up like that. And it's just annoying to have these things like set up and move, constantly move them around, constantly dicking around and things like that. Yeah, it's great if you've got a week to shoot a video and you don't shoot, you know, two or three videos a week and you just want to get it done like that. You just want to run and gun. It's setting up lights as, yeah, great for professional studios if you've got a lighting person, all that sort of stuff. But around here, it's not a big lab and they just get in the way. So it's annoying. That's why I just went with one single strip along the uh, uh, top like this. And as I said, a lot of people will ask, why don't I have them over here? It's because of the reflections of uh, products when I'm doing product teardown and stuff like that. I actually want the lights a little bit behind me because if you're shooting a product like this, you sort of want the light to come down, bounce off the front panel of the product and come back, but you don't want it to be um, at a, enough angle so that uh, you get reflections. You can actually see those in the product screen. So yeah, it's uh, yes, it's a compromise, but that's what you have to do. You can't always shoot, you know, like set up everything absolutely perfectly as you would in a proper, you know, professional video studio. So I'm pretty happy with that result. I'm basically getting uh, like over 1500 lux everywhere, pretty much. So, you know, it's going to be great. You probably won't notice a huge amount of difference, but some of the, you know, if I'm setting real deep uh, depth of field shots to get everything in focused on an angle board or something like that, I can actually get greater depth of field without um, getting extra noise on the image because I don't have enough light. And every camera works perfect outside. You know, GoPros, even crappy phone cameras work fantastic outside because they've got tons of light. You bring them inside here, this is much more than what your regular, uh, you know, inside your house or inside your regular office is. And, you know, I still might have a few little limitations if I wanted to get really uh, creative with uh, some of my shots. But yeah, now with over a thousand lumens, I'm sort of operating above sort of like the minimum recommended uh, settings for uh, camcorders and things like that. So pretty darn happy. And for the price, eh, can't complain. 45 US bucks a panel. Beauty. Catch you next time.